Hello everyone, welcome to Andrew Bruce Art of Watercolors. Today I'm going to be painting from a photograph. You can access that photo down below uh, on my Patreon link. With that being said, I have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua in front of me. 100% cotton, 140 pound cold press. I just saturated it with the large Hake brush. And now I am jumping over to my medium cake brush and going right for it. So I'm going to grab some ultramarine blue and we'll start playing around putting in a sky. I think I'm just going to skip over some spaces and let the whites take place like that. Little fluffy clouds. Uh, there are some dark clouds in this picture and I need to decide if I want to put them in or not, or how I want to do that. Also bring down a little bit for where my water is going to be. Let's grab a little bit of burnt umber into this mix. And that'll be for the darker portions of the clouds and just get some variety up in the sky. We could even grab a little bit of raw sienna into this mix. Uh, just a little bit more variation. Okay, that being said, I'm now gonna kind of map in where I'm going to put my land. This is a little bit more raw sienna on here. I have the bend. I have this bank right here in shadow. And we'll put our horizon line of trees back here. All right, so now let's start with um, let's start with a little bit more tree action. That being said, uh, please, you know, take a moment to uh, click the like and subscribe button. It really helps this channel out. And if you want to support the channel financially, you can also um, check out the Patreon. And join that. I have some really cheap, uh, easy tiers. And I do have exclusive content up there for you. This is a mixture of light red oxide and ultramarine for kind of a far distant purple. So it's going to be my far distant trees. I'm going to get a little bit more ultramarine bluey. For the shadows. These are going to come closer and get more defined. And in this region, I'm going to have a lot of foliage. So I'm just going to stipple in now. It's wet and wet. And I'm just doing this to kind of add a little bit of depth to this area for whenever I do paint over it. So kind of using it to map out and have a softness there. So it's serving a du dual purpose. My reflections down in this region. I'm going to grab some Payne's Gray. It's just my go-to for water's edge. And it'll dry softer than it is. I like to darken my corners of the painting as just a compositional approach. We'll look for a little bit of a green mix. I've been using ultramarine and lemon yellow lately to get my green. I'll put that in. Shadows. 
shadows, sorry, reflections. Start to build up the green aspect of the closer trees. Got a little bit more lemon yellow. I think uh, we'll benefit from that ultramarine in this mix because it'll have that granulation effect and that will um, really add some interest and texture to these. When I do this, I'm just flattening out the paper. Gonna build up this nice bright green back in here. We do have the green of the grass, which is a little bit darker in the photo. I think I might mix some burnt sienna into there. And then go back in the green direction. more lemon yellow and ultramarine. So now we kind of have that greenish mud. I'm going to use this for foliage variety. Paint the edges. Building up the depth of this tree here. Start creating that edge. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna grab a little pure lemon yellow. Establish that path a little bit better. Move that bright lemon yellow back here. I might have to come over when it's dry. We'll see how it looks. I'm going to go ultramarine and burnt umber. This will be for a dark. I haven't cleaned the hay cloth at all yet. We haven't even switched or used any other brushes either. It's always nice to see how far you can push yourself using one brush or minimum colors. Um, just be wary of that pushing because you may feel yourself way too restricted at one point and then you'll get discouraged. So if you ever feel like you're just restricting yourself too much, and you're just at that point, feel free to um, you know, switch things up or wash the brush or um, change the brush, etc. I'm going to try to narrow that back a little bit. Okay, the dark aspects of the reflection. See where we're at. Okay. I think we may benefit from a dry off in a moment. Um, seeing what else I want to emphasize. This is Payne's Gray. Bringing out these darks a little bit more. Okay. 
Okay. Um, at this stage, we could do a little bit of wet and wet with the rigger uh, working here, but I think I'm going to leave this as it is, do my dry off, and then we're um, going to come back over it with some more uh, pigment. So watch this pause and then see when I come back and how things soften up after the drying. Okay, that should be dry enough. Hopefully um, you can see from that point to that point the drying shift that took place where everything lightened up and got very soft. I'm going to take my rigger and the hake and I'm going to start putting some more pigment in and this will create a contrast over this background. We kind of had a unifying, um, the kind of wet and wet gives that soft unifying feeling overall. And then I find going over it with this kind of dry brush or whatever you want to call it really helps um, create interest in an exchange of textures. Just looking at that uh, far distant field that you could see through the trees, I'm tempted to omit that, um, but I think I'll leave it in. And start adding a little bit of that lemon yellow, that light that these guys are catching, using that side of that brush. Put it in in a textured fashion. Since I'm repeating this yellow color, this yellowish green, um, as it gets closer to me, I'm making it bigger and um, more detailed, or at least more texture in it, so that it looks like it's closer and that helps my sense of depth that's taking place. You do the same thing with darks. put a little bit of those aspects back in here. I'm just painting with the side of the brush. And then I'll make the texture and the marks bigger on this closer one. And then we get the contrast of these dry brush effects over the um, soft wet and wet that we previously did. This is ultramarine with burnt umber just to get some more darks in there. I'm even going to use the side of this to dry brush and get a little grassy effect. You can even come up along the edge here. I can also use the hake in this manner for that grassy texture. And I'm going to use that same concept on this side. There's not many lights coming through, so we're going to go on the darker end of things. And this will stand out over that softer background that we had put in for those trees. You can also dry brush across for the water to get those ripples. get a little bit more green. Well, here's ultramarine, here's our lemon yellow. And so far I haven't really done any, I haven't washed this hake off once.
Let's uh, grab some Payne's Gray into this mix just to kind of cheat, just to get a darker quantity. I'm gonna switch to the number four rigger just as a sense of ease. It holds more water and pigment than the number one. And we're going to intersperse the trunk and the branches of this guy and a little bit of reflection down for him. Using the side of this guy in that same fashion I did in the other portions. You don't have any many twigs and branches showing up. We do have a, actually, you know, we have a few. This is the number one, just for a little bit of variety in that uh, line width. And I can use the side of this fellow to dry brush in as well. Grab some more of that lemon yellow on this one. Heal that brush in there. A little bit of Payne's Gray mixed in. Just building up that dark there. Gestural marks. Just trying something a little different for that background than I usually do. Okay. Lemon yellow. Get a little bit more green superimposed on top of this, just for some more variety and depth. I can allow some more yet lemon yellow in there. We can grab a dark. twigs and branches up front for a little foreground effect. Some birds. I'm gonna pause for a dry off and we'll see if we should consider it done. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, photograph this and then I'm gonna do a second video um, where I'm gonna take this painting further. So I'll do a part one and part two, kind of calling this a finished product and then um, experimenting a little bit more on top and seeing what direction we can go in after this. On that note, uh, please like, subscribe, follow. Uh, you are more than welcome to follow along with any tutorial. And of course, you are more than welcome to sign your name to anything you do whenever you follow one of these tutorials. And if you do, I'd love to see what you paint. I'd love to see your results. Uh, please, you know, tag me in it. Let me know. Um, and you have my express permission to sell anything that you have done from one of these paintings. All right. You all take care. Have a great day.